Here's my attempt at reviewing functions and relations in five minutes. A function is a relation in which there's only one expected outcome or value when I press each x. Each x only has one outcome. We can also see it graphically by a vertical line test. Say if you have something like this, this here is a function because a vertical line will only touch the spot. Right at this x location, it only sees one y value. Here's an example of something that isn't a relation. See in this spot here, right at this x value, you can see that there's two y's that are associated with, with that x. Therefore, this fails the vertical line test. This is not a function. If we're looking for the domain, then we're looking for two main things, dividing by zero and taking the square root of a negative. We can't take the square root of a negative, we can't divide by zero. So we solve that, we solve those denominators then that could be equal to zero, we take those x values, those are restrictions, and they can't be those values. And x, we solve the radicand to be greater than or equal to zero, and those are restrictions on the x. If we're talking about the range, then it's probably that we're going to look at the graph. Be careful of our calculator because it doesn't always see what we should be seeing, but we can use our table along with looking at the graph and the equation to help us find the range. Take a look at types of graphs, you have linear graphs here. You can find the x-intercept by letting x equal zero. That will find us the y-intercept. We might have a quadratic graph here. You can see how this is a minimum, so that is a range important value. Right here, you can see that x can be anything here, right? y can be anything in this, this linear graph. In this one, we have x such that x can be anything, but here y is such that y can be greater than or equal to zero. You can see here with even degree, it points in the same direction here for n behavior. For x cubed, x and y is anything. We're doing a short form of the set builder notation here. Remember when we're talking about set builder notation or interval notation, interval notation will look something like this. Open brackets, if you're not including the boundary point. Another case here, when we talk about this one, we talked about the range, we could say that it includes zero and goes to positive infinity. Here, this is the absolute value of x. y is equal to the absolute value. You see that v-shape? Again, x can be anything. And y here, y is greater than or equal to zero. Here's a rational function. We have one over x. You can see there's a vertical asymptote right here at x equals zero. Remember, x can't equal zero. It's in the denominator there, so that's a restriction. And you can also see that there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. This is a horizontal asymptote x equals zero would be a vertical asymptote. Okay, we're studying function operations, so we should be familiar with all this notation, f plus g of x equals the y value of f plus y value of g, f minus g in brackets x is the y value of f minus the y value of g, f g means f of x times g of x, f over g of x means f of x divided by g of x, and here we have this fog, um, f composed of g of x means g of x, the output of g of x is used for the input of f. Now if we were to do it graphically, we would say for this one we would add y values at the same x location. So if you had two functions like this, maybe three right here, then rate at this point right here, at this x value, you have this y value and this y value, and you would add this one plus this one, in this case, which we were adding. And if you were subtracting, remember, it's each x location. So find an x location, and then take a look at the y value for one, the y value for the other, and perform your operation. Please keep in mind of the domain restrictions. For example, when you have a g on the bottom, you have to make sure that you can solve g of x equals zero, because you can't divide by zero. You also have to check to see if there's any square roots, because the radicand has to be non-negative. We're talking about composite functions. Remember, the output of g becomes the input of f. You could take a look at it as x values here to become, through g, become g of x values. But those can become the input for f of x values. So these inputs will become f. So we check the domains, right? If f of x is equal to square root of x, we can see here this is x is greater than or equal to 0. g of x is x can be anything. But when we take this composite function, f of g of x, we have to say, well, x could be anything. But it's going to be here. This is replaced. x was replaced with 2x minus 1. Therefore, here, 2x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. 2x has to be greater than 1, and so x has to be greater than a half. So even though the original domain was x has to be greater than or equal to 0, and in g of x, x could be anything, it still gets restricted within this point. So the domain in this case would be x has to be greater than or equal to 1 half, but x could be any real number. The y values, we'd see, oh, it start, again, it still start at 1. So here, rate would be greater than or equal to 0. y is there. But we'd have to check, probably our graphing calculator, to check to see if that works. Inverses. When we're talking about finding inverses, we take our function, let's take a look at this function, we're going to interchange x and y. So that means we replace f of x with y, we have 2x plus 1. Now interchange, that means the y became the x, the x becomes the y, and now we're going to solve for y. So here x minus 1 is equal to 2y, and y is equal to x minus 1 divided by 2. Here is the inverse. You can also prove that that's the inverse if you talk, take a look at that as g of x. If you did f of g of x and you found that that was equal to x, and g of f of x, you found that also to equal x, then your f and g functions would be proven to be inverses. If you're also talking about inverses, remember that inverses can also be a reflection in the line y equals x. So even if you took, take a look at a reflection, you could say this, the inverse of this parabola perhaps would look something like this. Now keep in mind that when you take a look at this, this red one is not a function. So what we could do is restrict the original function and just take this side, and that would end up having the inverse actually become a function. So we can restrict the domain of this one. So we could say, just take the positive x values for the original function, and that would result in this orange inverse function. Okay, that was your five-minute summary of functions and relations. Good luck, good studying, and see you in class.